I'm John Walker. Welcome back to Bearcat Update. Welcome to this week's episode of Bearcat Update. I'm your host, John Walker. And last Thursday, Winter Sports had their first official practices of the year. Northwest is currently working on a decision to allow fans into Bearcat Arena to keep it safe for the athletes, staff, and fans. They have not yet made a decision, but they are weighing out the options. Northwest Director of Athletics Andy Peterson did say, quote, if we socially distance, the number is about 28 or 29 percent capacity is how many people you could have in. We're working off of that number and just trying to figure out how many butts and seats that actually is. It's a challenge, but it's something we'll just have to keep working through. He followed that up by saying, quote, the biggest intricacy is if we're going to have games or not. That's the hardest one. When it comes down to testing and contact tracing, men and women's basketball are contact sports, so it's hard to separate if you have one positive test. In my opinion, it's not even the number of fans that we can get in yet. It's still trying to figure out if there's going to be a season. To help Winter Sports try and make it through the end of the season or even get to the beginning of it, there are multiple people contributing to the program, including the athletic trainers. Our reporter Dylan Johnson met with head athletic trainer Kelly Quinlan to see how the pandemic has affected her daily routine. Dylan. My first question is, how has the training changed with the athletes being off for such an extended amount of time? There's been a lot of changes. So um, with it being so on and off in the summer, for example, we started our whole mitigation process clear back in the summer in June um, when we started having athletes come back with everyone with social distance, nobody shared equipment. You know, we kind of did that whole thing. Um, and then we started to have a couple teams that tested positive. And so we had to kind of shut things down for a little bit and then started back up there in August. Um, when that happened, um, I would tell you, you know, obviously the fear as a sports medicine professional is, um, you know, one, like what kind of injuries are we going to look at? People are not going to be trained. They're not going to be as strong. They're not going to, you know, have the fitness level that they normally have getting into fall sports. And so that's a big fear for us. And so we think that everything has to, you know, really watching progression, really watching uh, the amount of volume and things like that that we're doing to try to prevent injury. Um, so that's something just from the injury standpoint. Obviously, um, the pandemic gave us, we had a lot of athletes that were doing rehabilitation, you know, long-term rehab because of surgeries. And so a lot of that was happening online where we sent them for home programs to do. But it's, again, not the same as working in the weight room with Joe Quinlan or here in the athletic training room with our staff, you know. And so... Um, so they came back maybe not as advanced as they would have been had they been here, right? And so once school started again, we really started pushing uh, things in the weight room, trying to get stronger and trying to um, get stronger in the weight room and the athletic training room. Have the coaches made it easier or tougher, kind of like progressing into practices and stuff, trying to prevent those injuries? Well, oh, that's a great question. The coaches have been terrific. Um, they have, we have done a lot of sitting down one on one with coaches to talk about what that looks like. And not only from the injury standpoint, but also just from preventing, you know, the COVID spread, right? And so a lot of them are doing many things for their, you know, doing small groups or people, you know, working in groups where people live together versus, you know, mixing a lot of the, the teammates, you know, or the uh, position. You know, obviously the hand sanitizer before and after practice. We're doing all kinds of like cleaning sprays before and after practice of equipment, you know, stuff like that. So there's a lot of things um, and they've been really open to just like, what can we do to keep these kids, you know, practicing and lifting and doing all the things that they need to do. So I have been very appreciative of of them being open-minded and being willing to kind of follow whatever protocol it is that we, we come up with. My uh, final question is, what are you trying to install in the athletes as like a form of emphasis to stay healthy during this unprecedented time? Um, a lot of hygiene. Now we always talk about hygiene and good hygiene and how important that is, but that's a vital thing right now. Um, not only that, but like really pushing fluids because if we're wearing masks all day long, you know, a lot of people don't drink as much water as they need to be doing and so really making sure that they're very you know being very diligent to um, you know get the right amount of fluids um, in each day um, getting to bed I can't tell you how much sleep is so important in not only performance but also preventing getting sick right so we're really trying to stress like make sure you're getting eight to nine hours of sleep a night like that's vital um, to you know help with you know your performance as well as just prevention of, of illness and so um, things like that and obviously there's the mental health side of this whole thing and I would tell you that that's something that's definitely increased, you know? I mean, I think the stressors of knowing, you know, are we gonna have a season? Are we not gonna have a season? You know, are we gonna, am I gonna get COVID? Am I not? Is my teammate gonna give it to me? You know, and so there's just a lot of, a lot of stressors and anxiety there too. So we really try to give them some tools to help with, um, with managing those feelings. And, and if we need to proceed with, um, you know, further medical, you know, management of that, we'll do that, so. All right, well, that's all I got for you. So I appreciate you taking time out of your day to talk to me. No problem. All right. Best wishes to the rest of the semester. All right. You take care.
Thanks, Dylan. Like we mentioned last week, the men and women's basketball teams will start their seasons November 19th against Northeastern State on the road in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. With that, we haven't heard any details just yet on indoor track and field for this winter. We're going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we talk about the Bearcat Steppers right here on KWT Channel 8. Welcome back to Bearcat Update. The Bearcat Steppers are seeing gaps in their schedule with the obvious absence of sports this fall, but they might be able to hit the floor during this upcoming basketball season. Our reporter Chase Chambers met with a few steppers to see how they've adjusted during the pandemic. Chase. Juniors Ava Limbo, Kayla Holmes, and Bailey Barnes talk about how much dance means to them and how they are adjusting to the new changes this season. To me, dance is literally my escape, like after a long stressful day like today even. Kayla agrees with some changes and thinks it has brought the team to have a better relationship. I think with COVID-19, we have had a greater opportunity to bond as a team. Bailey thinks the extra practices have made them a better team on the floor. This year has been really weird, not having games and everything, but we've been taking this time to like sit back, work on our technique. The newest addition to the Steppers is a coach, and she's looking forward to making them as successful as they can be on and off the floor. Well, we're having a really exciting year. Um, we have a new coach. Her name's Liz. And we absolutely love her. Um, she's been so dedicated to us. She actually drives from Kansas City three times a week to practice with us. The Steppers are preparing for any performance that might come their way with all the changes this season. We actually aren't sure what's coming up. It's kind of like whatever gets thrown our way, we roll with the punches and everything. So um, we had a performance that we learned about it the day before and we just kind of figured it out and went with it. The team is starting to learn their routine for the big nationals competition in January. We really hope that Nationals is going to be in our future. As of right now, we're planning as if Nationals is happening. Uh, we're super excited. We're starting to um, get started with our national stuff and looking into learning our routines here soon. So I know that one of them has moved back to April, so we're hoping to at least make that one. Kayla and Ava share their favorite styles of dance. My favorite dance style is probably contemporary or lyrical. It's just such a freeing style, and I think you can really put your own style into it, and I have always enjoyed doing that. My favorite style, as hard as it is, it's the hardest style for me, but palm is probably my favorite. Reporting for Bearcat Update, I'm Chase Chambers. Thanks, Chase. We hope to see the team perform soon for basketball and possibly nationals. We're going to take another quick break. You're watching Bearcat Update on KWT Channel 8. Welcome back to Bearcat Update. Although the athletic department hasn't seen much action this fall, there are plenty of games being played in the campus rec center. The Northwest Intramural teams have begun some new contests, and our reporter J.D. Wessel met with some intramural players to see what their plans are for the rest of the semester. J.D. Northwest Intramurals recently started its 3v3 basketball league in the rec center. The athletes have been playing for two weeks now and the rec center workers have been helping to enforce COVID mitigations. Athletes are given temperature checks and asked questions about health before playing in the games. I talked to rec worker Heather Parr about what that process has been like for her. It's kind of difficult just because some people don't like to listen to it or it's hard for them to like breathe was, is their excuse, which I understand. I completely get it. Like having the mask is kind of a pain, but I mean, we have to do it. If we want it to be over with faster, we have to enforce it earlier. For junior Zach Cush, he talked about why intramurals is important for him and everyone else involved. I mean, it means a lot because intramurals are a great time. Like it's a great brotherhood thing. And it's just a great thing for like, I think the campus and the community of students here in general. And so it's really awesome. And I'm excited to see what the rec center and uh, what they're doing for um, intramurals. Freshman Nate Brown likes the step the rec has taken to not only get students involved, but to keep everyone safe during that process. It makes me feel safe and it makes me feel like they're trying to move towards, you know, being more um, involved with everyone on campus. And it makes me feel like um, they're not just going to like throw us into it. So they want us to stay here and they don't want us to go home. But they also want us to, you know, be able to do stuff. Brown said this was his first time playing an intramural event and being in the rec center since coming to Northwest. This place is super nice. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I've never seen like such a nice indoor court and the way everyone's handling everything and doing stuff around here, it, it makes me hopeful for how things are going to go in the future for sure. The rec center has been hosting co-rec, fraternity, sorority, and men's leagues teams throughout each week with each league playing on specific days. 
They also have separate team check-in times to keep teams separated before doing temperature checks. So far, all the athletes and workers have stayed healthy in these first two weeks, and they hope to continue the success of the league for the rest of the season. This has been J.D. Wessel with the Bearcat Update. Thanks, J.D. Now it is time for my pick of the week. This week, I'm going with Northwest men's basketball. I had the chance to attend the Bearcats' first practice last week and now have a better understanding as to why they're the best team in the country year in and year out. The expectations are high for Ben McCollum and company from the Maryville community, but I think the expectations that they have for themselves are even higher. It's a team that won't feature Ryan Welty, one of the best shooters in the history of the program, but the freshman class looked pretty good for the couple of hours that I got to watch. I'm mostly excited to see how the Bearcats reclaim their top spot in the country after last season was halted before they could make another postseason run towards a national championship. For those reasons, and of course many more, Northwest men's basketball is my pick of the week. That's going to wrap things up for this week's episode of Bearcat Update. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at BearcatUpdate underscore 8. You can catch all of our previous episodes on YouTube at KNWT8. Thanks for watching. See you next week. I'm John Walker. Welcome back to Bearcat Update. What's up, guys? Thanks for checking out this week's episode of Bearcat Update. To check out last week's, click up here. And for all of our previous episodes, click down there. See you next week.